Anger. Anger often feels like a guest who has moved into the house with your permission, but not your invitation. Your husband's brother. Separated, not divorced, he grumbles. He has made breakfast uncomfortable, sulking in silence in yesterday's boxers and a t-shirt with holes in it. He hasn't said when he plans to move out. Some days he drinks the last cup of coffee without asking, always takes the newspaper apart before you have a chance, watches Spartacus and Robot Chicken at 2 a.m. on the couch downstairs. Once, you saw him use a fork to scratch his scalp. What, he said, it has to get washed anyway. You wish he would leave, or at least stay in the guest room. Maybe if he picked up after himself, watched less TV, made an effort to be pleasant. But then there was that time. The time you both saw a small man pick up a cat on the sidewalk and throw it with a cold laugh. Your guest exploded into real rage, real, honest, justifiable rage. He flew at the man with speed you didn't expect under all that slouching, the shouting, so loud a car alarm went off, people staring, the cat thrower shuffling off in public shame. You felt proud. Yeah, he said. He lives with me. That's my angry brother-in-law. Anger is like that an awkward and often unwanted guest in our lives. Yet there are times we cannot deny that anger is useful, even holy, responding to cruelty, injustice, oppression. Anger can well up from a place of great love or great justice. God is often angry, it seems, but he has his reasons. So does Jesus, and so do you.